I'm Stacy, and welcome to the kitchen of my old Kentucky home. Today, we're going bananas. I'm going to be making my dad's favorite childhood dessert recipe, banana pudding. And Jessica is going to be pairing that with a banana creation of her own. In fact, she's making a bourbon and biscuits cocktail original. For our Kentucky-inspired banana pudding, we will need a cup and a quarter of milk, a cup of heavy cream, a half a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of cornstarch, two ounces of Kentucky bourbon, two eggs, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of vanilla, a tablespoon of butter, vanilla wafers, and bananas. So for our banana pudding, first we need to simply make a pudding, and the, it's actually a vanilla pudding as the base. Now, you can use an instant uh, pudding if you're pressed for time, but really, is there anything better than homemade? I don't think so. So we're gonna need to put in all of our ingredients. We've got the cream, and the milk, and the Kentucky bourbon, the sugar, the salt, the cornstarch, and the beaten eggs. And this is on a low heat right now. This is just in a little uh, two quart saucepan. You can also use a double boiler if you're a little um, timid about maybe scorching it. And we're just gonna whisk this all together. You can trade that to a wooden spoon to keep stirring if you like. I'm gonna keep the whisk to kinda keep it mixed. And we're just going to cook this over a low heat uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, splashed a little out there. So while this is cooking, I wanted to talk a little about the origin of banana pudding or what we were able to find out. My history of it is simply growing up with it. Like I said, it was my dad's favorite dessert. Um, to fix for us, um, but also from his childhood. And he was born in 1942. Um, so I did a little research on Kentucky cookbooks uh, of our collection. You know, we've got one from the late 1800s, one from 1904. I really couldn't find a uh, banana pudding recipe before the 1940s. And so I have um, a hint of why I think that is. I think it's similar to when we talked about and made pimento cheese. I think it's one of those things that became a Southern tradition, but was aided uh, by some marketing out of the North. Uh, if you'll remember in the pimento cheese example, it was the mass production of Philadelphia cream cheese, and I'm using that as a recipe that really um, drove a lot of um, that um, recipe making uh, in the South. Well, I think the same thing must have happened with the, the Nabisco Company that was formerly the National Biscuit Company because in 1940, roundabout, they started printing a recipe for banana pudding on that Nilla, that famous Nilla wafers box. Uh, and as I said, my dad was born in 42, so my bet is that my grandmother, um, what that it was like a fanciful dessert. Our vanilla pudding has now been cooking about most, I'd say 12 minutes to get to this consistency on low heat and you, as you can see it's kind of um, it's not quite pudding consistency yet uh, it's a little set when it cools but it's more like a porridge you know, like an oatmeal consistency you can see kind of feel that um, and we're gonna take it off the stove let it cool and then we're gonna assemble our banana pudding so we've just taken our vanilla pudding off the stove to let it cool and set and before it gets to setting we want to add our vanilla and our butter. And we're just gonna mix that in and let this cool. And so while this is cooling, uh, we're going to prep the, our last ingredient, which is the bananas. I'm just gonna simply uh, cut and slice three to four bananas. And this will vary on the containers that you're using. And this is, you know, slice them to your desired thickness. So we're ready for the fun part now, the assembling. We have our vanilla pudding from scratch, which is cooling, not completely set. We have our sliced bananas and our vanilla wafers. And you've got a couple of options of how you want to present this um, because it doesn't need to be baked or anything. Literally, we're going to serve it right from here. Uh, you can do it casserole style um, in any dish that you want. Um, I kind of like a, a, a trifle type of dish so you can see it. You can also do it individually and then um, cap these and that's kind of a fun way. So I'm going to see if we have enough to do both. So what we're going to do is start to layer our banana pudding. We'll start with the little trifle bowl. 
little bit more. Okay, I wish you could smell this, very bourbony. Okay, then we're gonna take some of the vanilla wafers and I like to see them, so I'm just gonna set them around the sides. It's kind of like making um, Charlotte Rouge with the lady fingers. Gonna throw a layer of bananas in. There's no exact art to do this. Because once it goes in your spoon, it's gonna all be jumbled up anyway. That's probably enough. You can even add another little layer of wafers. More pudding. If you're getting the hang of this, right? We'll do one more little layer on this one. You can fill this to the top if you want. This one to me looks like it might serve four in this little trifle bowl. We don't have too big at eaters. Okay, we're just gonna put that in the fridge to set. Um, my dad always liked it to set overnight, um, but you don't have to do this just till it till really till it cools. I want to try one of these in here to show you what that looks like as well with a smaller spoon. Same process. We're just gonna put some pudding in our little mason jar. Use any kind of cup that you have. I think this would be really pretty in like a coupe uh, as well. I'm not gonna be able to quite rim with the vanilla wafers in this one, but I still wanna be able to see. Some bananas. A little sticky. Some more pudding. Round of wafers, a couple more bananas. I'm gonna leave room to be able to either top this with the lid, or also finish it with uh, whipped cream. A lot of people, I've seen recipes for a meringue. You can also do a meringue and um, uh, fire the top. Um, but I like it with just simply with whipped cream. So those are our two versions and um, I'm gonna get us this prep with some whipped cream and I just took some uh, vanilla wafers that were a, a, a little broken and crushed those up. But while I do that, we're gonna go check on Jessica and her original bourbon and biscuits cocktail with banana flavor. Well, since we've gone bananas today, I have created a banana bourbon cocktail that I'm calling Bananas Forester. And we're using, naturally, Old Forester bourbon, creme de banana, frangelico liqueur, and black walnut bitters. So we're gonna start with three ounces of our bourbon. We're going to use an ounce of the creme de banana. and we're gonna use an ounce and a half of the Frangelico. And Frangelico is a hazelnut liqueur. It also kind of has those like warm baking spices flavoring to it too. All right, and then finally we're gonna do several dashes of these black walnut bitters, which kind of adds to the complexity of the flavor. And we're gonna stir this with ice cubes instead of shaking it since we don't have a fresh fruit component. And when I am doing bourbon tastings, a lot of time I get that kind of ripe banana flavor. So I was excited about creating a cocktail that plays that up and that also will pair nicely with our banana pudding that Stacy's making, so I hope she likes it too. All right, now that we've got that chilled and a little bit diluted, I'm just gonna strain out the ice and pour it into a martini glass. There you go, perfect. And there you have it, it's my Bananas Forester cocktail.
All right, so what do you think about my first original cocktail for the show? Uh, love. Um, <laughs> wow, this is really great. No, thank you. Um, I can really taste the banana in that. Yeah, I think the frangelico just gives it the kind of like baked deliciousness too. Yeah. They kind of it's a little vanilla wafer or a little bourbon bread pudding kind of. I like it. Flavor. Although you were saying earlier, your favorite bourbon cocktail with yeah. something like banana pudding would probably be neat yeah. straight bourbon <laughs> right right <laughs> this is a little bit more if you'd rather drink your dessert than eat it I it's think. very festive I think we have a new tradition Jessica's original line of bourbon and biscuits cocktail well I do have a little bit of a confession with okay. that um, when I was recipe sampling with my boyfriend last night he was actually the one that came up with the clever bananas forester name well how about so that a bit of a collaboration well, all right well cheers to Garrett and cheers to the memory of my father for inspiring this episode. Cheers. We'll see you soon.